So I've picked out a few colours. I, I'm not really sure where I'm going with the colour just yet, so I'll feel my way as I go. Uh, but I've got what I think I might use out. I'm going to keep it very, like just a few colours and not work with too many colours at this stage. You're better off to stay with a limited palette uh, whenever possible and then extend out from there if you need to because you can usually make mixed colours um, and but you know it, it keeps it a bit more uniform with the design if you stick to the to the you know to a few. I'm working with furniture paint you could use acrylics if you wanted to. I actually want to use the furniture paint I want to keep it the same paint all the way through because I may end up doing other things to it so and I do like these colours. So some of these, some of these colours I've got are actually limited edition, but uh, we can work around those colours if you're wanting to use something very similar. Um, I'm just being a bit lazy using the pre-mixed colours too, so it just makes life a bit easier. So whenever I use acrylics or furniture paint, the biggest um, challenge with that is the drying time when you're doing painting. They dry pretty quickly, being acrylic, as opposed to say you're doing an oil painting. What I do is I have a palette that I call it a wet palette that I put my paint onto that keeps it wet for a lot longer. Now these are fairly fluid compared to like a tube acrylic, which is you know more solid paint. But the pigments are really good in this, very strong. So what I've got here is a very messy palette. Uh, it's a, a baking tray. And on the bottom of the baking tray is some fabric that I, there's a several paintings that have gone onto this and dried. You can hear the, the hard bit. But basically you put a cloth, that a lint-free cloth, so a piece of cotton or um, you know one of those chuck super wipes or something on the bottom and you dampen that and you put the paint on top of that. And because that's damp, you don't have it sloppy wet, otherwise you'll end up with a big pool. But you have that damp, so when you put the acrylic on it, it keeps it uh, damp for a long time for you. And that way you don't waste paint and you've got a lot longer, um, you know, a lot longer to use the paint that's actually there. And watching me do it, you'll be able to, I'm hoping you'll have confidence to do it yourself because you're basically breaking things down into shapes and I'm going to try and keep the colours sim um, simple for you so that you might have you might be more courageous yourself. With the design on here, I didn't draw every little detail. Drawing every detail served no purpose because I'll just end up painting over it, but I did need enough that I would know what I was doing. I can kind of look at it and imagine the rest. Um, so I probably put more drawing on it than I would normally do, but I'm also, because I'm demoing to you guys, I needed you to be able to see what I was doing as well. These are the colours. I'm going to start with the Waratahs. So the Waratahs are on. I've got, I've drafted roughly the Waratahs, the Peony Roses and a bit of the greenery from those and a suggestion of tulips. Now I have printed off Google Images, sheets of these, which like I did in my other um, video I might just roughly refer to them just for rough shapes but I'm not going to copy anything exactly. Um, if you guys need images to copy because it is easier if you've got images to, to copy um, exactly you can try there's a website I don't know if I've already told you about it called Pixabay pixabay.com all those images are royalty free you can use them for your furniture you can use them on things and it doesn't matter if then you sell it on if you're wanting to do that it's it's okay for commercial license so uh, if you need actually images that you want to copy more um, directly you're safe to use those images uh, just check the license but most of the, just about every image that I've looked at over there whether I've used it for blogs or whatever I haven't used many but but they've never been a problem with um, commercial license and so forth it's good, but, because you've got to be really careful with copyright. But I'm not going to copy it that much. However, I do have a lot of silk flowers. And um, as you can see up here, I have silk flowers around the house. And um, I will use those. I'll use them like a still life to refer to those as well, rather than actual images themselves. So this is our Waratah here. There's another one here. I've just put a little bit of paint here 
because um, to test out the colour Merlot, which is a, a very um, like a brown, dark brown ready colour, brick red almost. Um, I use that paint sometimes under under pieces, so when I sand back, it kind of gives like a mahogany edge to it. So I've used that, or sometimes I've used it for wood finishes, uh, imitation faux wood finishes. So it's a colour that I do have on hand and use. It's not, it's not really the pink I would have chosen. However, I probably would, probably would have gone for a, started with a colour like that. So the mailbox, if you're talking about botanics range, the mailbox red or even scarlet. Um, this this would be a nice colour too. That's why I've got it there just in case. But I'm going to block in with this and start there, and um, and then see what I need after that because I start with my darks first. So the shadow part of the flower. So just rough roughly blocking in the shadow part. Just to get something down and then we'll be able to see what we're doing. So I'm kind of just scumbling it in. That's just a bit of water. And the white that I'm using is creamed white, but you could use any white. Um, I, I wouldn't probably use pure white though. And the reason being, um, if you haven't got, if you've got just a little bit of color in your white, it tends to look lighter in a painting. So it doesn't, it, that doesn't apply to if you're putting it just painting on a piece of um, furniture, pure white's going to be your whitest white, but in a painting it's best to have some kind of, some tint in it. So creamed white is just a little bit off white. So I'm just, I'm just blending a bit. I'm not being too worried about this. As this dries, it's going to look a little bit different because it does, when it dries, it changes colour a bit. So I'm, I'm using the dirty brush that's already got a bit of Merlot on it when I'm picking up the, the white. So it's kind of mixing on the as I paint it. Now it looks like I'm not being very careful and I'm actually not at this stage because this is going to take a while so what I want to do is get that blocked in so that we can kind of overall see like a, almost like a cartoon stage of it and then we get fussy. Because if you go to a lot of detail at this stage and then make a mistake and have to change it or decide, you know, you want to move something, it's a whole lot of work that you've done for nothing. So we just want to stay really simple at the start. We'll be able to tell too the colours, you know, if we need a bit more pink over here or over there, if we just 
and get it get them blocked in like this. So I'm going to use the shadow colour. I've got some peonies here. <laughs> Suggestions of some peonies. Or oh, peonies, isn't it? I'm probably saying it wrong. Peonies. And again, I'm just doing suggestions with the paint. I need that colour up on there too, up on the, so just to remind me, I need a bit going up onto there and I might even just have it just here too. You see how simple those shapes are at the moment? They're really only like little ghosts of what's going to be up there. Just a suggestion. Now there's only one way of doing it too, but now I'm going to lift it right up so you can have a better look. You see? So already on the top, we've got a suggestion what's going there. This is going to be the warrior here. So you just got to kind of ignore the fact there's all the lumps and bumps and just try and visualise it as a flat surface. Don't let all this intimidate you.
So of course, if, when you're painting on your piece, you don't have to go over top of these edges. You could do designs in the flat place, places and keep it far simpler. I'm deliberately demonstrating this just to show you everything I can so, so that you get the benefit of knowing how to do a lot. Um, Now this one will be interesting because I've done I've done this one with the centre being the handle.
So I'm just giving my tray a bit of a squirt of water. It's starting to get a little bit dry. Just put the sideboard. I am referencing my bouquet over there a little bit too that I plunked down beside me. I am looking at this a little bit to just pick out shapes and things as I'm doing it because as I'm, you know, I don't want them to all look the same and some of them are the pe pe peony roses and some are the waratah. I just can't distinguish between the two of them just yet because we haven't got that enough detail to really see that. And I'll go from the pink that I'm using, the Merlot, we call it a pink, it's, but um, once I've done that, I will put in some of the, like that eucalyptus green. Um, pro actually, I'll probably start with the blue as the deep part of the green and do that first and then look at it again. It looks so messy at the moment. If you're finding it's drying too quick too, you can use a spray bottle, an atomizer, and just give it a bit of a light spray. If that helps you keep it wet a bit longer. I could even stop at this and just do, I'm not going to, I'm going to add more colours, but you could even just work with those colours on the grey. You can see that you could just do a design just in different tones of the Merlot right through the darkest colour right through to, to a, a white and, uh, and still have a beautiful design on the grey. And the reason this works is because it's kind of a greeny grey. It's got like a tinge of, when you see it against a, a warm colour like this red colour, it's got a, like a greeny, it throws off a greeny tinge. So it's kind of like an opposite colour, so it pops on it. Even though it's really subdued colours, it'll still pop. Growl at Daddy. No. No. Is he coming in the mama's room? Oh, he's got what 
dog is growl at my husband. He's taken my keys and he knew he heard my keys. He's gone, they're not your keys. <laughs> he knew that wasn't that car, was it? He's the old mummy's car. Switching over to the other colour very soon. So we'll get this one in. Which looks really and see this, I will have to take that across there too. I don't want it to stop there. So I'll paint it in there as well. As if it, it didn't flow up there, it flows over there as well. Don't have to, you could stop it there. But I'm not going to, I'm going to blend it in. So it works open or closed. Okay, sitting up here, I can see all the pinks kind of flow through and nothing's too even. It's kind of looks natural, like a natural flow. Nothing's, you know, too symmetrical or anything, but there is a little bit of a gap between here and here. There's kind of no link up there. So I'm going to just, no, but I don't want anything too big, I don't think. So I'm just going to put something just to link this across. Just put a small one in there. We could do buds later too, which can tie it all in as well, but I'm just doing all the main flowers, but I want to make sure that that works. Good, 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 good. <coughs> Just wipe my brushes out. So against that, that'll be a nice mid blue to use. I can use it in the in the leaves, and then I can use it on any blue flowers that I use. So I'm going to use this for a mid blue, but I need a shadow color, just like I needed here. I need a darker color. So I'm going to use um, chambray, which is a gorgeous color. I'm going to use that on the darkest part of the leaves. So I'm going to put some leaves in now. See how that's very, very light? So I need that dark. I need the dark of the chambray in there. And it's a little bit lighter than the, the dark of the red. So it'll slip back a bit from the... Um, Flowers a bit.
I'm just throwing them. Extra leaf going in there now, hey.
doing some small suggestions of leaves on those bits we're going to just fade out. So you can see I'm, I'm taking that light colour now and I'm, I'm dotting it round and what I'm looking for is an imbalance in the colour and the tone. So I don't, I don't want it like at all over here and nothing over there. So I'm kind of placing it, again, just like the design, trying to place it randomly so it looks organic and natural but, but still even, you know, still balanced. So... That's why you work the whole thing in one go. You get a more cohesive design. That's how I work anyhow. back and kind of see I'm not quite sure about this flow is really nice there but it kind of stops there and I don't want it over there but it kind of stops in a block so I need to do something with it I think I think I need to have some kind of line come out and just pick it up just take it out a little bit further out here so much okay now I'm thinking I've got some little gaps there that have got a suggestion of tulips so I'll add them on but I think I'll add them I don't want to add another color unless I have to right now I think I'll add them by just making them whiter because I'm going to add white tulips. <laughs> Look at our studio mascot. Look at Kinsey in there. He's passed out. <laughs> He's so cute. Okay, let's do some tulips. Here, suggestion in there. I think over there. And there's a few up the top, so there's a few in here. So I'll do the body first and move you up closer to that. Um, what I'll do is rather, I was using the two blues before, I'm going to use the lightest blue and the white. And I will start with the white. There's a touch of blue, I've just put like a touch of blue in it, in the colour. I don't know if you can see that. It's only, it's only just, just a touch.
how that white pops now because I didn't go too wide on those pink flowers. That really stands out. The grey, the cyborg, is actually not a bad colour. Stop pouring that. So I might just add a bit of blue and then use the grey. She looks kind of all the same a bit, but as you get closer like this, you can start to see. It's more obvious if there's a bit of imbalance and I've got just one spot I'm a little concerned about I'll show you so that's the top we've got our top happening there see see how I've got this line here and this bit here so there's an empty gap there and the empty gap there which is a little bit too even the spaces so if I was to fill that with Canterbury bales or whatever, fill that with the same flower, it might look a bit too even. So I've got to do something with one of them. And I'm thinking I've got more room to do something here, I think. So I might just add a... What will I do? I'll add... Some white here, suggestion of a tulip, and then I think I need to add another pink flower in just there, just so that doesn't look too same, like the same thing. I think that's what I need to do. And then when I've got that there, I think I need another little one up there. So I'm back, I'm going to switch back to the pink. We're almost done for today. You've done well to be with me that long. Um, yeah, I think just we just need something here. That's better. I can see it already. That's that's better. And then up on the top in here, I need something kind of here-ish. So But I cannot tell you, I can't emphasise enough, I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really, really important. Planning, doing the drawing first, doing the planning first, makes all the difference to the end. I know that this may look like a simple process, me, the way I'm throwing it down, 
but I'm only confident to throw it down like that because I've got my base to work on. I'd be moving flowers and stuff all over the place if I didn't have my, my base to start with. It would have been a whole lot harder. So I think I'm just about, I'm being mean with my white here. I need to pour out some more really. Um, but I think we're just about done at that stage. We are just about done. Just adding a little bit of pink up in here. Okay, that's it. Okay, so, but you'll see it's up close that they're very mess, like they're very, very abstract. They're just a suggestion. So, um, but having them done like that, you kind of, it's, it's a bit like looking up into the clouds and then you kind of see shapes and then you get more and more clearer and then you get more confident about doing the shapes. And, and flowers is a bit different to, you know, the drawing or painting a face where if you get the nose out of whack you just it looks like no doesn't look like the person whereas flowers are very very forgiving and um so you get that impression from there and you kind of see the petals forming and that and so then you can then then you can clarify them more because you've already got that that suggestion there and it's like a roadmap to the finish uh, but if you try and draw it in straight away that's far harder than doing it this way.